Hello, welcome to this small video on um, the cadaveric anatomy of brachial plexus. As you can see in this specimen cadaver, you have brachial plexus which has been dissected open all the way from its roots down to its terminal branches. Let's have a closer look at the structure of the brachial plexus and appreciate its relative anatomy um, in relation to its surrounding structures. Let's begin with the roots. In this section, we can see the brachial plexus being uh, formed by five roots, which are the C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1 nerve roots. The C5 and C6 nerve roots combine to form the upper trunk, while the C7 nerve root continues as the middle trunk. The C8 and T1 nerve roots combine to form the inferior trunk. So this is the upper trunk, which gives the suprascapular nerve, as can be seen here, going all the way back. The upper trunk then divides into anterior division and a posterior division. And now here the posterior division cannot be seen very well. The middle trunk divides into an anterior division and a posterior division and the inferior trunk divides into an anterior division and a posterior division. All the three posterior divisions coalesce at the back of the axillary artery to form the posterior cord as can be seen here. The lateral cord here is formed by the anterior divisions of the upper trunk and the anterior division of the middle trunk. The anterior division of the inferior trunk continues to form the medial cord. Let's now have a look at the component branches coming out from these cords. As we can see here first, the posterior cord, it gives away two branches. The first one is the axillary nerve, which exit the axilla through the quadrangular space as can be seen here and then it goes behind the humerus to innervate the shoulder the muscles the bone the radial nerve basically just descends through the axilla or the top of conjoint tendon into the arm and then dives posteriorly pierces the triceps on the other hand, the lateral cord gives rise to basically two branches. One is the musculocutaneous nerve that can be seen going down here. And the other one is the lateral root of median. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's have a look at the musculocutaneous nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve essentially moves laterally from the lateral cord and pierces the coracobrachialis here. It essentially innervates the flexural muscles of the arm, naming, uh, namely the coracobrachialis, the bicep brachii, uh, and the brachialis. Later on, it forms the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. The median nerve proper is formed by the lateral root of median and the median root of median, which comes from the uh, medial cord. And then the median nerve essentially transcends down the arm all the way up to the elbow joint. This is of course the mid arm, so the elbow joint is not seen in this specimen. The ulnar nerve comes from the inferior trunk and essentially is a continuation of the inferior trunk all the way down uh, into the mid forearm and then on its way to the medial epicondyle. There are a few small branches that are useful uh, to learn about. The first of these is the long thoracic nerve. This emerges from the C5, C6 and C7 nerve roots and descends upon the thoracic cage downwards. The other main nerve to learn about is the thoracodosal nerve as seen here on the top of the subscapularis muscle. This nerve essentially comes from the posterior cord right down from there along with the upper and lower subscapular nerves which 
innervate the scapula. The thoracodorsal nerve innervates the latissimus dorsi muscle and ca as can be seen here. This in a nutshell finishes the cadaveric anatomy of the brachial plexus. Thank you.